Well, in uh, writing shijo, um, teaching students how to write shijo, sometimes there are um, uh, some difficulties in getting the point across, helping the students to get the meter and to understand how the uh, syllable count works. And so correcting a student and showing where this way might not be as good, but there's a better way. Uh, correcting students is a very important part of uh, teaching how to write shijo. And so let me give an example of how to uh, uh, correct a student when a shijo may not be written uh, uh, in, in the best way. Uh, for example, let's take our, our uh, shijo, uh, though I die and die again, though I die a hundred deaths, after my bones have turned to dust, whether my soul exists or not, my red heart forever loyal to my Lord will never fade away. Uh, suppose a student turned in a Shijo translating that, or if they're not translating, of course, they're writing from new, but it sounded more like this. Though I die and die again a hundred times, that my bones turn to dust, whether my soul remains or not, ever loyal to my Lord, how can this red heart ever fade away? Now, it's the same idea, but it misses some of the meter. The first line, though I die and die again a hundred times, falls short of where we want to go. We should have four segments. So it should be, though I die and die again a hundred times, we don't have that fourth segment that's missing. And so what we want to do with that case is take the student that wrote, though I die and die again a hundred times, I may die, and then that finishes that line. So uh, if, you, if a student turns in a, a uh, shijo and it's not full enough, you can help them to fill out the line so that there are four segments, each with three or four beats, as the, as the uh, pattern indicates. So though I die and die again a hundred times, though I die, fill out that line, maybe you can find a better way to do it, that my bones turn to dust, it's okay. Whether my soul remains or not, that's okay. Then ever loyal to my Lord, how can this red heart ever fade away? That's not bad, but maybe we can fine tune it. Ever loyal to my Lord, comma, that's ever loyal to my Lord. My goodness, we've got eight beats in that first line. And what does the rule say? The rule says three beats are set up and then the five to eight beats for the punchline. So there are the, rather than saying, ever loyal to my Lord, how can this red heart ever fade away? Uh, maybe one could put a comma after ever loyal to emphasize that. Now that's four beats. The rule says three, but there's also a thing called poetic license. And that is that sometimes we can have a little bit of flexibility, okay? It's not absolutely three beats, but the ideal is three beats. And sometimes, if you look at something like Ever Loyal, it's four beats, Ever Loyal, but it's two words. So maybe that's close enough. It looks like two, it's four, maybe in a poetic sense, it comes out as a three. Poetry is not exact mathematics. <laughs> so Ever Loyal maybe would be a better setup in this, in this attempt here. Uh, ever loyal to my Lord, how can this red heart ever fade away? Well, uh, that might not be the smoothest, but you can work at making the meter by changing some of the wording. Um, you could say, to my Lord, ever loyal this red heart, how can it ever fade away? You see, and just by saying, just opposing the words, you can get closer to, to the ideal. One of the things that a student can do when they're uh, working on shijo, we have to be aware of the meter. Shijo is meter. Maybe an analogy is, is similar to music. You know, these days, young people like rap. And rap does not, have, does not emphasize melody. In fact, sometimes it doesn't have melody. And it doesn't emphasize harmony. When I think of music, it has to have melody, it has to have harmony. And so to me, rap 
doesn't work as very good music. It's my generation. Sorry, young people. <laughs> but music is more than melody. It's more than harmony. It's also rhythm. And rap emphasizes the rhythm part. And rap also emphasizes rhyme. We throw these rhyme in. So different poetries emphasize different aspects of the poem. Now, listen to this version of the Though I Die poem. Were I to die a hundred times, then die and die again. With all my bones no more than dust, my soul gone far from men. Yet still my red blood shed for you shall witness that my heart was true. Now, what's going on with this poem? This poem has incorporated rhyme into the measured meter of Ashijo, which adds an interesting wrinkle to it. And this creative person here, and maybe some of your students would be creative, might add rhyme into the poem. Now this one says, were I to die a hundred times, to die and die again, with all my bones no more than dust, my soul gone far from men, men and again is your rhyme. Still my red blood shed for you shall witness that my heart was true. You and true is the other rhyme. So that's a very clever way to do it. And if a student comes up with a rhyme within the Shijo, why not? It's okay, it's creative. And what we want to do is encourage creativity on this. So that's another way to, uh, to look at uh, a Shijo, is if someone throws in rhyme, it's not wrong. It's not necessary, we don't, have, we don't have rhyme in Shijo as a general rule, but it's okay. Let me give you one other uh, famous Shijo, and again, setting a pattern, learning a masterpiece, and then looking at uh, how it works is a, a good way to learn how to write a Shijo. Uh, here's a, uh, the masterpiece, and then here's a variation on it. I will cut this long mid midwinter night in half at its waist and roll it and roll it and tuck it under my summer quilt so that when my love returns, I'll unfold it to lengthen out the night. That's a very clever Shijo. It's written by uh, Kisang. If you don't know, Kisang are like geisha. Uh, they're the entertaining uh, women of the old court. And this is a Kisang by the name of Huang Jini. And Huang Jini wrote this very clever poem that on a long midwinter night, and you know, the midwinter nights are so long and her lover's not here. And if she could roll that up and save it. And notice she says, cut it in half at its, at its waist. <laughs> That's interesting, the personification of night. To night to have a waist, a middle? Yeah, you cut it in half at its waist and fold it up and save it. Where? With your summer quilt. So in the summertime, are the nights long? No, they're short. But that's when, if your lover returns, you want a long night. And so here she talks about saving the long winter night for a summer night when her lover returns. So it's a very romantic and very clever poem with personification going on in the poem. Um, listen to this translation that doesn't work quite so well. In the twelfth month, taking half of the night, the spring breeze blew round and round beneath my bedding. On the night the unwed came, spread out at every turn. Now, this is really poor. This is really poor. It's just garbledy gook. So how do we help it? This is one thing that teachers have to do. A student turns in a practice thing and sometimes it's gobbledygook and we need to help them to make a better poem out of it. In the twelfth month, now he's talking about the midwinter night, so twelfth month is a not bad way to do it. Another way would be to say to set December. On a long December night, there we go, taking half of the night, well this uh, misinterprets it, taking half the night, I will split in half this long winter night. It's so long that even half of it is a long time. And it says, my spring breeze blew round and round beneath my bloodying. Uh, that's really gobbledygook. What he's saying is he wants to, not the spring breeze blowing round and round, but what he wants to say is this, this quilt you're going to roll round and round, and you're going to save it this night. You're going to roll round and round, not your quilt, but this night, and save it with your springtime bedding. Now, you know, 
These days we live in air-conditioned and heated homes and we use the same bedding year-round. In the old days, in the summer, you used light bedding because it was hot. In the winter, you use your thick down comforter because it's cold. And so she's going to take this midwinter night and save it with the summer bedding so that when the summer time comes, you pull out your bedding. Oh, here's this night I saved. Now, isn't that clever? You can't do that. You can't do it, except in poetry you can. And she's going to save this long midwinter night when she pulls out the summer quilt. Ah, here's this long midwinter night that I wished I had on this short summer night. So uh, that way we can improve that, that line about the spring breeze blowing round and round. And no, I want to save this long midwinter night and tuck it with my spring and summer bedding. On the night, now this says the unwed. And here again, that's, you'll find students will use a word that's not a real word or not a proper word or a word that could be a poor word choice. And so on the night, instead of the unwed, let's just say my lover, simple, more direct, returns, I can unfold this night and save it. So on the night my lover returns, I'll spread it out to lengthen out the night. Something like that would, would improve. So uh, hopefully for, for teachers working on how to write a good shijo, one of the secrets is to take a poor attempt and help them to make it work, to fit the meter. And that's an example I hope is helpful to you of uh, using correction as a way to teach how to write shijo. Thank you.